six microseconds, which means that in 30 milliseconds in that 20 megahertz channel, the sensor card would have collected 5,000 samples. Now, think about it. It's going to do one 20 megahertz channel, then it's going to do the next 20 megahertz channel, then the next 20 megahertz channel. So if, for instance, you were scanning between 2.4 and 2.5 gigahertz, that's 100 megahertz of spectrum, and you were simultaneously wanting to scan between the 5.15 and the 5.85 gigahertz bands, which is another 700 megahertz of spectrum, then it's going to slice it up into 20 megahertz channels and scan each one for 30 milliseconds. So to scan that frequency band would take the Cisco Spectrum Expert 1.2 seconds to do that. And so your screen and those measurements would be being refreshed every 1.2 seconds. Now, if you're doing a frequency scan, let's say just in the 2.4 gigahertz band, and let's say just in North America, then you would scan between the 2.4 and the 2.475 megahertz band, and you wouldn't bother with the higher end of the 2.4, and you wouldn't bother with the 5 gigahertz band, in which case your screen would be refreshing more often. So one of the things you want to think about when you're using this tool is what are the frequencies that I actually want to scan and you can change those in the tool in the control panel. So you're just scanning those frequencies that you're interested in. So let's go back to our discussion about the real-time FFT plot and the power versus frequency plot. So we just went through the measurements that are done in the real-time FFT plot. So you can see on this chart, it's done on a 20 megahertz channel, and there's 128 sub-channels, or bins as they're referred to, that are listened to. So if I listen for a 30 millisecond period, I will gather 5,000 samples. Now if I'm gathering 5,000 samples, this is really good for spotting kind of bursty transmitters, uh, things like Bluetooth that kind of hops in and out of different frequencies, I'm much more likely to detect them. So that when you want to use the real-time FFT plot is when you're looking at broad spectrum activity, when you're wanting to see what's happening in the band. And this is really where you want to be if you're doing site surveys, your initial network deployment analysis to find out what interference sources you've got out there. Now let's talk about the power versus frequency plot. If you look at this plot, this is the one that's done the analysis within the computer yourself. So it uses and leverages off the CPU, the microprocessor you have in your laptop. Some of the things are the same. It still looks at a 20 megahertz channel, then moves on to the next 20 megahertz channel. The advantages, of course, are that the bin size is not hard-coded in the ASIC, and you can define that yourself. Now, this is the one that you want to use if you're troubleshooting. Let's say you found a source of interference, and you want to focus in on that particular interferer and see if you can find it, and you don't want to look right across the frequency band, then you would use the power versus frequency plot. And what's going to happen is that when you narrow down the frequencies, the refresh rate is going to be much quicker. So as you're walking around with your Cisco Spectrum Expert, trying to say, OK, where is that interfere? Am I getting closer to it? Am I getting further away? Then that refresh rate is going to be much higher, and this will make this a lot easier to work with. So again, two different plots that on the surface look the same, but in fact give you quite different types of measurements, use them in different ways. The next spectrum plot that we want to look at is the sweep spectrogram. So the previous plots that we looked at, we could see the RF power, the signal strength, right across the band that was being received. And in the demo, you would have seen that that was constantly changing. Now, what if I need to look at that change over a period of time? That's when I use the sweep 
spectrogram. And the way to think about this is that it's made up of little tiny horizontal lines. And each one of those horizontal lines is a measure of what was happening at that moment in time. And then the next line, the next moment in time. And so over time, I'm building up this picture of how that spectrum is being used and how it's fluctuating over time. So basically, each line represents an RF sweep across that spectrum band you can see here there is a colored line and that indicates the strength of the signal that's being received so red would indicate a very strong signal and then through the yellow green down to the dark blue indicating that it's getting very weak signals indeed so I can tell by looking at this chart for instance that there's activity in the lower part of the 2.4 gigahertz band but the rest of the band is relatively free and so if I was looking at this and I wanted to deploy an access point in the 2.4 gigahertz band then I would look towards deploying it in channel 6 or 11 because there's not as much noise there but I wouldn't want to be deploying it in channel 1 so it's important to understand the concept of duty cycle in the Cisco tool. Now in the previous plots that we were looking at, we looked at raw RF power in terms of dBm. This one here, Cisco is trying to give you a sense of how occupied is this channel over a period of time. And they call that the duty cycle. And the Cisco Spectrum Expert uses two measurements when they're calculating the duty cycle. The percentage of time that the RF signal is 20 dB above the noise floor, and the percentage of time a transmission from a known device is present in the channel or in the band. So in this illustration, I'm looking at the FFT duty cycle, and I've got trace 3 on, which is indicated up here to show me the maximum that occurs and at a maximum moment in time I was seeing a little over 30% duty cycle in part of the band. So the table on the left shows how the duty cycle is calculated and it's quite simple. I've got 5,000 samples within a 30 millisecond time frame and if a thousand of those have detected energy I say the duty cycle is 20% if 250 of those had detected energy, I say the duty cycle is 50% and so on. So this gives me a measure for how much the spectrum is being utilized. And in this case, you can see that the spectrum is not very heavily utilized at all. So in addition to the spectrum plots that we looked at on the previous slide, there's also some spectrum charts that are well worth looking at. Um, and here I have a list of those charts. There's the active devices. And an active device literally is a pie chart that shows you what kind of devices are creating the different type of RF activity. Then you've got devices versus channels. And this shows you a number of devices that are on the different channels. And you can go in and select a specific channel or you can say, oh, I want to have this analysis done right across the frequency band. Similarly, you can have devices versus time. And this one detects the number of devices that have been detected during different times. So for instance, you could set it up for 24 hours and then monitor the types of devices that you're seeing during the day and how it varies during the day. And again, you can do that by a specific channel or the entire band. Channel utilization is a measure of the duty cycle as it relates to channel activity. Channel utilization by time is the same thing, but now you can actually select a time interval. So again, you might choose to monitor it for 24 hours. So you can see how the duty cycle changes over time. The interference power is the chart that I'm showing here. And you can see that it is a bar chart, much like the channel utilization charts. And if you look at this chart really, really closely, you can see a little plus sign right here. And that is indicating the signal strength of the strongest Wi-Fi access point on that channel. And so you can see there's one here on channel 1 and another one, another little X, that's indicated on channel 36.
Now the other lines that you see there, the other bar charts that you see, are the signal strengths from different devices, and different devices are color coded differently. Now what I like about the interference chart is this here, because that enables me to take a look at the code channel interference due to neighboring wireless LANs. And then the last one on our list is the signal to noise ratio bar chart that you can create. So now is time to look at some real life spectrum plots. Now earlier on we were using the Cisco Spectrum Expert and we have just finished talking about the different charts that you can see in the spectrum plots. Now what we want to do is take a little look at the devices view. Now the Cisco Spectrum Expert, when it hears noise and interference in the band, will actually try and identify the devices creating that interference. And this can be incredibly helpful if you're trying to find out what's interfering with the band and potentially want to try and turn it off or move it or work around it in some way. And it classifies interferers in three groups. Classified